Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so, and I heard it first on the radio. This love of God, so rich and strong, shall be the saints and angels' song. And I heard it first on the radio. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound, the lost and lonely can be found, and grace can even save. I heard it first on the 
captive spirits could be free And I heard first On the radio My soul has found the resting place Until I meet Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. Yes, it is, it is Sashalyn, yes. the online worship experience platform broadcasting live from Montego Bay, Jamaica. Yes, I am your host, Denise Lawson, Leslie, alongside Sashalyn Hayvorn. Take it away, Sash. We want to say welcome back, welcome back, welcome back. Whether you're joining on any of the online platforms, that is, namely, YouTube, Facebook, WCC, and Bless TV. I think we have our sign language right on standby as well. So we welcome you back. And for the few of you who are in-house, good evening to you and welcome back to this afternoon's program. Mm -hmm. I'm sure, Denise, it promises to be good. Oh, yes? yes, yes, yes. We have beyond the surface. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. We do have beyond the surface. So get out those papers, pens, your Bible, everything, because you know that when the team comes, oh, yes. right, they are going Coming to be getting to in into the word. The word. Oh, yes. So, And remember, share that link and be the minister of the gospel. Not only that, we have mentorship as I well. I was just about to say that. And we have a very special guest for you this afternoon on, on mentorship. Can I tell them who it is? Oh, I'm told we can't tell you who it is. So you definitely need to stay tuned because it's a great surprise. And I think it's a story of that you don't want testament to miss. Yes. that you don't want to miss. Indeed right. So. so you need to stay tuned for the mentorship connection. Mm -hmm. and, and of course... We're always praying. We pray without ceasing. Yes. And so we're inviting you to send your prayer requests in the chat as well so that we can note them and mm -hmm. pray on your behalf. Uh, so this evening, you can't miss it at all. <laughs> can't miss it. So you have to be the minister and be very kind as well. Mm -hmm. And what must, you, what must they do? If share you're going to be kind, yes, man, share, share the link. link. Share the link. And well, tell a friend to tell a friend that yes. something good, something awesome a is happening on. right here. So right yeah. at the Western Right Conference. here, right here. Absolutely. Well, we are going to go into our song service. And we're going to invite you to be a part of that, to sing along. And let's get ready. For the second portion of this evening's program. Amen. Just before we do that. Let's pray. Yes. Loving Lord, we thank you so much for being such an awesome God. God, you are so good. You are so, so good. And we just want to thank you. Thank you for the opportunities that you've given to us. And Lord, may your Holy Spirit take control, lead us, that everything that leaves this platform this afternoon may be done to your name's honor and glory. Lord, we lift you up and may your name be magnified and souls may be blessed and garnered for your kingdom, we pray. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen.
I'm standing here all alone Trying to figure out Why life seems so unfair Cause this world is too heavy For one man to hold I'm feeling like I'm spinning out of control Turn to tell me if I didn't have you, whose name would I call when I need to escape? You're my hiding place, you're my shelter from despair. Without you, I hate. times when everything I touch seemed like it turned to go started believing now I can make it all on my own 
But I see fortunes fade away and turn to dust And there's one thing I've learned It's in God I will trust Where would I go? Who would I turn to? You're my hiding place You're my shelter from despair Without you I haven't got a prayer When I need to escape You're my hiding place You're my shelter Thank you very much. Good afternoon or good evening, whatever time and it is in your local area. Welcome to your favorite time of Bible study. It is beyond the surface as we, as usual, dig deep into the word of the Lord. Thank you very much for your patience uh, this afternoon. And we know that we are in for a very special um, time this afternoon. We continue our study in the book of Romans. Very special series of Romans. And we continue to look at uh, Paul defending um, uh, salvation, universal um, salvation. Last week we concluded chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, no condemnation. And what a special time we had. And this week we pick it up at um, Romans chapter uh, 9. We're looking at God's children, children of promise. So welcome one, welcome all, call your your friends, your neighbors, uh, your family members, and let them know that it is your favorite time of Bible study beyond the surface. If you are joining us from in and around Jamaica, from the, any of the 14 parishes, any of the five conferences, welcome. Hello, my Caribbean friends, those who are joining us from the Caribbean. We welcome you in a very special way. Those who are from North America, and in North America, the United States, and 
Canada, those from Central America, if you speak Spanish, French, Latin, English, um, whatever you speak, welcome everybody. If you speak Swahili, we welcome you in a very special way. And you know what? what's my greatest prayer? My, my prayer is that um, the, one of these days, the Holy Spirit, if not more than one, continuously, we sit here and discuss it in English and the Holy Spirit will carry it in every language right across the world and bring understanding. This is indeed my prayer. But until then, we will keep on going in the um, anointing of the Holy Spirit. So we welcome our family to um, our study, those from England and across the world. Welcome one, welcome all. This afternoon, we have um, a new face and a new voice on set, one that should have been with us a long time, but we are happy to have him this afternoon, and I speak of Pastor Christoph Hyman. Pastor Hyman is a pastor of the Cambridge District of Churches, and he has been doing a tremendous job there. Hear me use my word already. He is doing a tremendous job in Cambridge, and if you know, Cambridge is a little distance from Montego Bay, so he had a baptism and had to just rush straight to here. This is a commitment that our pastors and our elders continue to make for beyond the surface. And then you have one and only Mr. Cool, Pastor Cool, the, the person who is, is, is an all-rounder. And, and I will always say that about him, ever willing, ever faithful, Ever true. Uh, 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 not a, I don't sound like a, a Rasta man, no. <laughs> ever faithful, ever true, Mr. Cool. And so we are, these two gentlemen have the responsibility of taking us through the study of chapter 9. And I have the privilege of posing to them uh, questions that I hope that you would have asked them. And some very hard questions because the, the, the chapter 9 of, 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 of Romans has always been um, misunderstood and misrepresented. But we are here to discuss the truth and nothing but the truth uh, as we continue on beyond the surface. Let's bow our heads as we pray. Father in heaven, we pray for your divine anointing of your sweet Holy Spirit upon us. We pray, Lord, that you will, your name will be honored and be glorified and your people will be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, Pastor Sunlin, welcome, my brother and friend, Pastor Christoph. We welcome you. Pastor Sunlin, we, we look at, even before we get into to chapter 9 and to look at the verses the whole matter of a number of scholars Bible scholars um, look at chapter 9 and come up with the, with, the, with the theory and with the doctrine of double predestination I want you to walk us through what double predestination is all about and what, how does the correct understanding of predestination is important for our understanding of Revelation, um, of Romans chapter 9, or the correct interpretation of predestination. Well, thank you, Pastor Williams, and good afternoon, everyone. It's my joy to be with you. Uh, predestination... Uh, of course, is the whole idea that an individual is predestined or, as it were, it is settled that they will be this 
and not be able to change. Mm -hmm. in, other way, in other words, their destiny is predetermined mm -hmm. uh, whether they will be lost or be saved. Now, uh, many persons today have the idea that when you were born, or even before you were born, God knew you. And therefore, God who knew you already predestined your, uh, your future. Mm -hmm. And there's really no change of it. Uh, it is the teaching that in the eternal ages before creation, uh, God would have looked at uh, all of the future and having seen the future because he's God, he can predetermine where you will end up. So the idea is, 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 is coming out of one of our, uh, our friends of ancient time. Uh, he is Augustine. Augustine in AD uh, 354, uh, 430 that he lived. He was the famous bishop of Hippo uh, Regius in North Africa. And for him, he taught that God gives his grace to the elect alone. In other words, if you are part of the persons or group who are believers, then you are the only one who will be given grace. Mercy. If you are born and God foresee that you are not going to accept him, he then seal you to be lost in hell. So in other words, you and I would have no choice as to where we get in terms of our destiny. But we are very careful about how we uh, accept this idea. For Hippo, or Augustine of Hippo, he said that those who are not so chosen by God are left in their sin and will justly receive eternal damnation. In other words, no matter how much crusade that you have or evangelistic series, no matter how much sermons you preach, if the man is already lost and predestined for hell, there's no way that he can change his situation. And that to me is a serious matter. Of course, we know that in the 16th century, uh, Martin Luther and John Calvin um, accepted Augustine's teaching on predestination. And um, since then, the Calvinist predestination is one form of another, as has been very influential in the Protestant churches. Then we have um, uh, Jacobus Arminius, 1560, the celebrated Dutch Reformed theologian. He strenuously opposed the earlier Reformation idea or the Reformers' doctrine of predestination. He taught that God who would receive Christ and who would not, each individual has been given the power to choose or to reject Christ. Yep. So it, it means that everyone has the choice. Their destiny would be worked out according to the choice they make. Those whom God force would, would, would force or would choose as, as followers are those who are already leaning towards following God. So uh, as a church, we are careful how we look at the doctrine of this predestination. No, Paul doesn't share the idea that once, once you're lost, you're lost, and once you're saved, you're saved, or you're predestined by God. No, Paul is following a line of argument in which he attempts to show God's right to pick those whom he will use as his elected ones. Right. Right. So the idea is this. God has given free will to every single person. Mm -hmm. So go back to Genesis. God told Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 2, 16 and 17, that of all the trees in the garden, you may freely eat, but of the tree of the, go of the knowledge of good and evil, you don't touch it nor eat of it, because the day you do it, you shall surely die. Now, Adam had the choice, as his wife Eve, to follow what God said or to disobey what God said. God told him that in the day that you eat thereof, in other words, if you disobey, disobey me, if you choose to do something that I have forbade you to do, then the, the ultimate result would be death. 
So it means that Adam and Eve had the free choice. We too have the free choice of accepting God's grace. And, and so we are saved not by God's predestination, but we are saved by the grace that he offers, which is forgiveness, pardon, when we confess our sins and when we choose to follow him. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yep, so we have a choice to do that which is right. Now, there is the other part which God is saying, and this is it. When you become a part of God's family, he predestined you to be saved. In other words, he endorses your decision and your conviction to be saved. So he does not do it for you, but he helps you once you have made the choice to follow him. Uh, you know, Pastor Sunlin, we could probably close the, 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 the study this afternoon. But just based on the foundation and the, the answer you have said it so clearly. Um, and, and let us understand too, friends, that when we discuss the whole matter of, of, of predestination, and as we look at chapter 9, we have to understand it and discuss it in the context that here again, Paul was talking to the Jews as a chosen people and, 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 and predestined as, as a chosen people. And God has the right to choose whoever he wants to, to represent him. Yeah. So the Jews were chosen by God to represent him, to be his witnessing team, to be his evangelist, mm -hmm. um, to spread the love of God throughout the world. And so it is in that context. Now we have to look at the whole matter as Paul speaks to, to predestination uh, and, and, and how God predestined the Jews to be his people. But, but this predestination... For salvation is for all those who God foresaw mm -hmm. his foreknowledge that would accept him as Lord and, and Savior. And let me follow up on that. In other words, God elected them right. to represent him, but did not predestine them uh -huh. to be in heaven. Right. He did not predestine their salvation right. because their salvation now is going to be their choice. That's right. Uh, uh, beautiful. We come now, um, uh, uh, Pastor, and we look at from verse, verses 1 to 3, and we see that Paul made a strong statement, especially talking to the Jews as the chosen nation. What sacrifice was Paul prepared to make for his countrymen? I, I, I am happy to, be, to join the Beyond the Surface team this evening. And especially excited about Romans chapter 9. Because the, before Romans chapter 9, we notice Paul. Paul was sharing his, his zeal and passion for Christ. Paul was excited about Jesus. He said, nothing can separate me from the love of God. Mm -hmm. Paul emphasized that, you know, uh, when I reckon the suffering of this present time, it is not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And then after Paul would have stated all of that, even in verse 31 of the same Romans chapter 8, mm -hmm. he says, if God be for us, who can, who can be against us? Paul was, was just celebrating Jesus at that point. But we see here that Paul's mood changed in, in, chapter, in chapter 9. It, it started by speaking about how sorrowful he was. Sorrowful for this reason, uh, 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 as, we, as, we, as, we, as we understand here. He, he, the problem that he was having after this climax is that he was now seeing a nation that God had elected to be his representation was now having a challenge. This nation was now rejecting the Savior and rejecting the salvation that came to them first. As, as, as you would see, um, the, the Jews got the opportunity at salvation and the Jews got the opportunity as being God's chosen people. 
and, 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 and they, they, they rejected the good news, but accepted the fact of being chosen. But here we understand, if, it, if the gospel brings sure salvation to God's elect, why are his chosen people, Israel, not found among the heirs of salvation? If the good news of salvation is the fulfillment of the promises made to Israel, then surely it should be meet with the approval of those whom it was especially intended, but instead it is stead most of them to a bitter opposition. So we see while they were in the elected of God, they did not choose the salvation of God. So it's not just being called God's people, but also showing forth the salvation of God. The Jews were elected not because they were better than anybody else, but they were elected because that was what God wanted. And, 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 and the point is made here that God can choose whomever he will to do his work because God is no respecter of persons. And I, I want us to know that. Because sometimes we believe that because we are a part of a particular faith, that means that we are guaranteed a position in heaven. But our usage, our, I, 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 may, not, I may not want to use the word usage, but be, not because God is using us. That does not mean that we are immune to the pangs and tragedies of sin. Because Paul comes back to say, not all Israel. Yes. We, we're coming up to that. Our Israel. Yes. When, when, he, when he used Isaac and to say, not all those who are from Israel are really Israel. So, so the point is yes. really German. Yes, yes. And, 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 and I find it interesting that Paul, and, and, and we know where Paul is coming from. Mm -hmm. Paul was Saul, and Saul was serving on a certain council in the Jewish understanding. Paul knew what the Jewish custom was and what they would have accepted. So Paul was bitter, bitterly sorrowful um, that, you know, after seeing and reading the book of Isaiah, reading all these, the, the, these books of the Old Testament, Paul was now proving from the Old Testament that salvation came by faith. And then he, he, he went on further um, in, in, in verse what he, he, he started the discussion and the first, the first thing that Paul affirms is, is love and sorrow for his own people. That is one of the, Paul, the things that Paul recognized in Romans chapter 9 and verse 1 that his people, every single individual a part of the Jews needed the salvation of Jesus. He declares then um, that that the cause of their rejection is not the failure of God's promise to them. He's saying here, it's not because God failed where they did not believe the, the, the salvation through Jesus Christ. Nor is there any injustice on the part of God. As a matter of fact, God cannot be unjust because he's the righteous God. And, and so Paul appeals to his, to his experience as one united with Christ. So Paul is now saying, I am not only standing with my people, but I'm standing on the side of Christ. Paul, well as aware that many of those who follow, those who are Jews, his fellow Jews, uh, regard him as a traitor. But, but, but watch this now. I find it interesting. Paul was seen as a traitor, but yet still he was not calling the Jews a sellout. But he was sorrowful for them. I, I want us to know this. That while Paul was, was, was seen as a traitor in the eyes of the Jewish people, Paul, in his own experience with Christ, wanted to minister to them. He, want, he empathized with them. He, as a matter of fact, Paul was so sorry for them that they have not yet come to the light. It tells me that if we have been given a particular light, if, person, if, if there are individuals who have not yet gotten to this light, we must not be so callous and cruel to them, but we must be, we mu we must be so comforting and so um, attentive to their every concern because the Spirit of God wants to lead us to help others to come to a saving relationship 
with Jesus Christ. Okay, and, 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 and if you notice too, um, Pastor, that, that in as much as they call him a traitor, Paul now did a Moses thing. Yes. Because Paul said to God, and, and listen, to me, this is total <laughs> surrender. Listen, to me, it is better you blot out my name right. out of the book of life than to, than to blot out these. Mm -hmm. My people. Mm -hmm. and, and you remember that Moses, Moses did that, made that request. Yes. But, 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 but God um, denied the request because every person has to take responsibility right. for his or her soul mm -hmm. um, salvation. So you see that coming out. God refused Paul's request as he did for Moses. Yes. Refuse them because every person has to right. be given account for his or her soul um, salvation. And it tells us, Pastor, mm -hmm. no matter how much our leaders want us to be saved, we have to be saved on our own. What a point. Because many people believe that because the Jews were chosen, that they were going to be saved as Jews. Mm -hmm. But even every individual have to be saved based on their relationship with God. And I believe that is why the, 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 salvation, um, the salvation opportunity is now so open in the New Testament. You're not saved by who you're attached to based on religiosity, mm. but you are saved based on your experience with God. Praise the Lord. Oh, that's tremendous. Pastor Sunlin, um, Paul continues to present the special blessings and responsibility that have been given to, 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 to Israel, to God's children. What, what are some of those that he, he emphasized? Well, we know that Israel had many blessings. First of all, we see the blessings as outlined to Abraham in chapter 12 of, of, of Genesis, God had told him that he would be blessed. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 2, God says, I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee and make thy name great. So God had already promised Abraham that he would bless him immensely. In chapter 17, um, God is speaking in the covenant discussion now with Abraham. And in chapter 17, verses 2 and 4, here's what God said to him. I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. Mm -hmm. Verse 4, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. We see God working uh, in the life of Abraham, promising him a lot of blessing. Then in verse 8, uh, God said, I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be uh, their God. So God had already promised that he would bless Israel, and Israel certainly would have received these blessings and these blessings have been reiterated, have been repeated over, over again to Abraham, to his son Isaac, and to uh, the grandson Jacob. The blessings continually was rehearsed. As a matter of fact, when Moses was now rehearsing the blessings, uh, God shared the, the whole promise of the blessings also to Moses in, in Deuteronomy chapter 6. God told Moses some of these promises. And I'm reading verses 10 to 12. And it shall come to pass when the Lord thy God would, shall have brought thee into the land which he swear unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to give thee great ungodly cities which thou buildest not, and houses full of all good things which thou fillest not, and wells digged which thou diggest not, Vineyards and olive trees which thou plantest not, when thou shalt have eaten and be full. Then beware, lest thou forget the Lord which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. So what Moses was saying, God 
promised the blessing from Abraham's time, your father, down to your days. But beware, because the blessings is not going to follow automatically. Mm. Unless you are willing to obey the stipulations attached to the blessing, you are going to lose it. The blessing that you are going to multiply, you are going to be the head and not the tail. So if Israel faithfully followed God's will, Deuteronomy 28 tells us that they would have been superior spiritually, materially, yes. physically, culturally. Look at this whole idea. Their law came straight from God. Mm -hmm. Straight from God. Written with the finger of God according to uh, Deuteronomy 31 verse 18. Uh, Exodus uh, 31 verse 18 rather. So the law came to them and their, their instructions came from God how they should live. Now, Paul was aware of all of this divine plan for Israel that God laid down. But he recognized also that because they rejected Christ, who is a, part, who is a central theme Mercy. of the blessing, mm. then they would never remain in the same way as a nation who automatically just received the blessing. Mm. Mm. They have rejected Christ. So Paul made this, made this important point in Galatians 3 verse 27. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. And then he said in verse 28, There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. And verse 29, it says, then if you are Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed. And mm. here is according to the promise. Yes. In other words, Jews, you are my fellow brothers and sisters. But I'm, I'm sorry to tell you this. Mm -hmm. What blessing was promised by God is not going to be automatic because of your bloodline. Right. Mm. It is going to be now because you have accepted Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, who is the central theme and person wow. in the redemption plan. Having rejected mm. Jesus, you have forfeited your reality of yes. receiving the blessing. Mm -hmm. And so you are in trouble. Now, what did, why did God chose to bless the Jews and to ask them for a special responsibility? Because God wanted a people who could rightly represent him, his character, and share the truth to the world. Let's not forget that the entire world at the time, full of paganism, false worship. God chose Abraham because Abraham had a sense of right in terms of godly truth mm -hmm. yes. and was willing to follow God. And so God said, because you are willing to follow me, I'm going to pick you out and I'm going to send you somewhere, and I'm going to give you instruction how to live, and you are going to be the father of the nation that I have chosen. Wow. These are the blessings that will go along with your faithfulness. And part of the responsibility then is that you must represent me as a witness to the world, mm -hmm. to show my glory, to reveal my character, to demonstrate my love and my grace to the world so that they can know whom I am. And the covenant relationship involves circumcision. Right. Circumcision. You're adopted. Circumcision is going to go there. The, the stipulation also has walk with me if you will obey me and keep my charge and follow my commandments. Then you shall be a peculiar people. Bless above all. But you must remember that you're called to represent me as your as the, 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 the ones who have received the blessings, you're called to represent me and to show the world about the true God. And I'm telling you, that was an awesome responsibility. Uh, uh, you, you know, I, I can't help but saying tremendous here. I have to say tremendous, <laughs> tremendous, tremendous. And you know, Pastor, Pastor Son, we, we have to, it, it looks as if we have to put to be continue <laughs> with this one. Because we are taking our time. We are taking our time. Uh, my, we, we are going to go to a musical break. But as we prepare for, for, for the musical item, Pastor Sunlin and, and Pastor Hyman, 
My wife went to a special training in Kingston one day this week. And she took the Knoxford and then uh, took a taxi from, where the, from the Knoxford station to her training center. The, 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 per, the taxi driver is, she discovered, is a Seventh-day Adventist. And he said he was going to be on this evening. He goes to, I think it is New Haven Church. And he said he asked a lot of questions in his, in his church. I think he's a deacon. But one of the questions that he asked, that he said he wants an answer to, is why is it that the commandment says that thou shall not kill? But you see where God actually kill, wipe out nations. And you know, I went to pray and I said, Lord, give me the answer. And it dawned on me, the Holy Spirit, reveal it. Because the it, it's all in the plan of the great controversy. The great controversy, the, the fight between good and evil. The promise that was made to Israel about the Messiah coming through their lineage and coming through the root of David, through the lineage of, 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 of God's chosen people. It was a devil's plan to wipe out the entire yes. Israel as a nation so as the Messiah to prevent mm. the Messiah from coming. So when God destroyed nation, it was in defense to preserve to preserve yes. a nation, to preserve salvation, to preserve the life. And when the Holy Spirit, I jump yeah. and I say, hallelujah. So God in his effort was preserving because the Messiah was promised through the lineage. And if the devil could have destroyed, listen to me, when, we're coming up to the song, but when David faced Goliath, it was because the, the, the Messiah should come through the lineage of David. And anyhow, the devil had used Goliath to kill David. Remember, I said David didn't have any offspring yet, you know. <laughs> anyhow, the, and that's why the bat, that battle was so important. Because anyhow, David was destroyed by Goliath. You see how God put things, anyhow, that lineage would be destroyed and would be cut off. So God is protecting his people. God is protecting our salvation. He's fighting for us. We go to a musical item and then we return. Kind of homesick for a country to where I'm never gone before. No sad goodbye. But time won't matter anymore. You love I'm longing, longing for you, and so. 
Across the river, will my faith gonna end in sight? Oh, this just, just a few more, few more days to labor. And I will take my heavenly flight Beulah land I'm longing for you And so Welcome one, welcome all back to our second segment in this Beyond the Surface as we continue to look from the, the, the book of Romans, Romans chapter 9, God's um, chosen people, God's promised people. And Pastor Hyman, I come over to you now. Um, how does Paul identify the true Israel of God, because not all Israel <laughs> are Israel. How does Paul identify the true Israel of God? Pastor, hmm. as, I, as I reflected on verse 6, 7, 8, and 9, I conclude that I will not be chosen because of my faith, but because of my faithfulness. Wow. Wow. Your faith, my faith, I'm a Seventh-day Adventist. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to be chosen because of my faith, but because of my faithfulness. Wow. That was what Paul was emphasizing in Romans chapter 9, um, 6 to 9. He, he, says, he says very plainly that not all Israel... <laughs> Are Israel. The verses here shares the entire spec spectrum of, of, of what Paul is trying to say. And he uses illustration about the promised child, which would have been Isaac, um, which would have been Abraham's son. Abraham had believed, uh, uh, believe, Abraham believed that they would have con conceived a son as a fulfillment of God's prediction. It was a son of, 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 of a promise. He, Isaac was not just another child that Abraham and Sarah had while they were having fun. This child was a promise of God, a promise in impossibilities. I, I want us to know that, that Isaac did not come when things were possible. Isaac came when things were impossible. It means it, be, it was because of God's doing that Isaac came about. Those who, like Abraham, 
accept righteousness and salvation by faith rather than by works are counted as true descendants of Abraham. Now this is the point where Paul says the true Israelites are not just Israelites by bloodline or, 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 or by blood connected, but by those who are faithful. Because Abraham, and I, 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 I'm going to be a little... I'm going to be a little problematic here. Abraham's, Abraham's son that he had was not just by works. Even while works was important. <laughs> but it was not just by works, but it was by the faith that Abraham had ex 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 exercised in God. And so that is how Isaac came about. So now we see God's statement to Abraham was, through Isaac, Shall your descendants be named? Um, did God mean that, 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 that the chosen, that, that Isaac would have been the chosen for salvation and Ishmael was for damnation? No, because Ishmael, as we know, that Ishmael was also Abraham's son who he had with, you know, Agar. But there was a promise that was also given to Ishmael. It says um, in, in Genesis chapter 17 and verse 20, as for Ishmael, I have heard you. Behold, I will bless him and make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly. He shall be the father of 12 princes and I will make him a great nation. So the promise was given to Ishmael as well, as well as it was given to Isaac. But Paul's point is that his grief for his fellow countrymen must not be understood as meaning of failure and, uh, and God's promise because God will never fail. Mm -hmm. So it's not that God has failed, but it's that God in his wisdom has, has, has earmarked Isaac for, to do a specific work. The children, uh, I, 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 want, I don't want to run ahead of myself to suggest that remnancy is now based on obedience to God. Mm -hmm. God's remnant people is not just by who were chosen as the Jews were chosen, but God is calling everybody to a point of faithfulness and obedience because obedience is what allow you to be chosen. As I said before, you will be chosen based on your faithfulness. It's based on obedience. And one of the things I realized God did God changed the trajectory from a religion of convenience. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a part of the Jewish um, religion. I, I'm okay. I'm well. I am, I'm a part of Abraham's descendants. I'm good. I'm a, but what God is calling us to in this last day is to a point of obedience. And also we notice that Ishmael and Isaac, according to the flesh, were, were, were both sons of Abraham. However... To Isaac, his descendants were the, were the promise made. Ishmael was not included. But watch this now. This does not mean that Ishmael and the descendants were outside of the pale of salvation. But simply that God had chosen the descendants of Isaac to be his missionaries to the entire world. They were to reveal the principles, watch this now, of his kingdom before the nations, that men might be drawn to him. This is saying that Isaac, while he was chosen, was chosen for this task, and is to bring the message of salvation to the entire world. I don't know about you, but I feel a little Isaac spirit in me. <laughs> I want to be a part of those who bring the entire word, the, the, the word of God to the entire world. And as I, as I hasten, Pastor, to share with the church, um, to, to, to be at the beyond the surface team, that Paul, in making reference to that, is saying that the promise of God is given to those who accept it. While Isaac would, would have been, have become the parents of, our, 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 our Isaac parents would have become the, the heir of the promise, the, 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 the person who received the promise, we are all hearers of the promise. And not only that, we can fulfill the promise of God through what we do as children of God. 
we can fulfill the promise not because of what we have, not, not because of who we are aligned to by bloodline, but because God has chosen those who are obedient to bring forward the message of salvation. So this divine promise is not only given to those of the Genesis era, but also to those of the Revelation era. And so we, those who were in the beginning got the promise, and those who are in the end will fulfill the promise. Wow, wow. That is um, tremendous. Thank you very much um, for that comment. Pastor Sunlin, uh, Paul used another illustration. How did he illustrate now um, the purpose of God according to um, election? Uh, he used first Ishmael and Isaac, and then which which the Jews would be really familiar with. Yes, and and so he give another illustration. Uh, could you walk us through that? Okay, in in chapter nine of Romans, uh, verses ten to thirteen gives us this clear point that Paul is talking about. He says, and not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, mm -hmm. even by our father Isaac. For the children being not yet born, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Mm. Now, Paul is, is sharing an important point. Remember, he's arguing with, with Jews that are very much steep in their whole history. Mm -hmm. And they were certain about how their blessings will come. It was because they were bloodline Jews. Mm -hmm. And having been born as a Jew, it meant automatically in their mind that they would receive all the blessings, all the promises and the inheritance. Paul is trying to dissuade them from that whole idea. So, when he's talking about the election uh, of Isaac uh, and the rejection of Ishmael, it, it should be understood in this way, that it is not because Hagar was a servant mm -hmm. or because Ishmael was the son of a bondwoman and Isaac was the son of one who was not a bondwoman. Uh, he is making the point clear that through the election, through the freedom of choice, now Abraham obeyed God. In chapter 19 of Genesis, the Bible says that God uh, had Abraham as his friend. He knew him very well, that he will keep his commandment, that he will walk after his will, and he will uh, get his household to, to worship and to keep uh, the, the commandment and instructions from God. Now, we find that there are many persons around with Abraham who did not obey God. So, here is Paul's uh, illustrating the whole salvation point, that it is by faith, mm -hmm. not by works. It's not by bloodline. It is by the choice of the individual to follow me. So, here is his argument. Like Isaac, Jacob is used as the symbol of those who are saved by grace, not by their own works. Esau is a symbol of those who are rejecting God. So because Jacob exercised faith in God and was willing to walk with God, and, I'm, and I have to be clear here, Jacob was not a nice guy when it comes to behavior. <laughs> Jacob was not perfect in any way. He had done a lot of uh, wrong things. But he recognized his error and he was willing to seek forgiveness from God. So Paul is not making the point that God arbitrarily gave salvation to Jacob and denied Esau. No, there was no arbitrary choice on the part of God by which Esau was shut out from the blessings of salvation. The problem was that Esau was not willing to accept the offer of salvation that God provided. Esau was rebellious. Esau did things that 
were, were out of line with God's will. And he was not willing to take correction in any way. So the gift of God's grace through Christ, it's all free to anyone. There is no election but one's own, but by one's own choice. So then, God has elected a character in harmony with his law. And Jacob's character was in harmony with his law. Jacob was willing to humble himself, to repent, and to seek salvation. So this whole idea that, 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 that Paul is making in, in chapter 9, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Right. Why would God love Jacob and hate Esau when the Bible tells us that God loves the world, mm -hmm. that he gave his only begotten son? God loved Jacob because Jacob had a willingness to repent and to choose to do right. I saw Esau had a desire and a behavior of, uh, you know, unrepentant spirit, disobedience. And so he chose to do wrong. So Esau perished in his re rebellious way of life. But Jacob chose to walk in God's way. And it is Jacob's own generation who would now follow that would receive. Because even though he had 12 sons, unless those 12 sons were willing to obey the stipulations of the covenant, they still would not receive the promise. Right. So it is important then that we must recognize that the election is according to faith. Yes. According to one's own obedience, one's own willingness to follow God. So God did not hate Esau in the modern sense of the way. That Greek word like, uh, like it's a Hebrew equivalent is used in the sense of to love less. Right. Or to put one uh, to put to one side, you know. Uh, when I'm from a farming community as a child, and when you are going to the market, there are some that, some of the the products that were were looking right, right for the market. The others, something was wrong so with yeah. them. They had of, of certain quality, uh, yes, and, look, and, and inferior quality. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So Jacob was. It, it, it's not. It's not that you're, you're not going to use them. Not but, at all. But some. Some are going to go for the local consumption That's right. at home That's and the right. others for the market. That's right. So wow. it's not that God was saying to Esau, you're left out. Mm -hmm. He's saying, if you choose to stay out, I can't force you to come in. It's all a matter of your choice. Jacob has chosen to come in even though he blundered along the way. And since he has decided to come in and accept my grace, I am willing to make him the inheritor of the blessing, the progenitor of the nation, to continue the blessing line. But Esau, I'm sorry because you have rejected it. You're, you're left outside. But if you are willing to make the turnaround, then I will be willing to help you. Wow, wow. Mm. What, what, what a blessing. And, and, and what, what, what struck me, Pastor, is that you're right. In, 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 and, and here again is God's foreknowledge coming to play. Why Jacob was chosen over Esau. And, and, and as Ellen White explained it, that even Rebecca was surprised at Isaac. That Isaac was still determined to, 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 to bless Esau. Bless Jacob. To, to bless Esau. Okay. To bless Esau because he sent Esau to go get venison yes. oh, to yes. come back. Yes. Yes. And Rebecca was, 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 was surprised. That's why she stepped in. Because Esau's attitude and behavior mm -hmm. was far away from what was required to be someone to be the progenitor That's right. of Christ. Mm -hmm. Esau was a wild um, irresponsible yes, he was. Um, um, fellow, while Jacob now as a shepherd mm -hmm. was, 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 was loving and careful and thoughtful, but, he, but Isaac was still determined that mm -hmm. Esau is his firstborn that's and right. Esau, so that's why uh, when he went to get venison, Rebecca stepped in and said, listen man, he, he not qualify. Right. 
to carry the blessing that God has given. Mercy. And so I am going to work up this as if to yeah, help, 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 help out God. But God was able to take care of that. Right. And you rightly said, Pastor, as we, we have to close here, you rightly said that it is not that God did not love Esau, but, 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 but God loved Jacob more because of Jacob's commitment yeah. to him. He, he, he loved Jacob more. And, 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 and it happens. If we are faithful, it's not that he's going to hate us. Right. But if we are faithful to God, God will use his faithful individuals more than those who are um, less faithful uh, to him. And, and listen, it, it, we are just halfway through. Uh, Romans 9. Another strong point is coming up about Pharaoh. God hardens yes. Pharaoh's heart. Yes. And, 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 and while we close here, Pastor, is that the, the Jews could have said, well, with the, with the illustration with, um, with, 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 with Isaac, with, with, with Isaac and Ishmael, they could have said that, listen to me, we understand that because Isaac was, was, was from the, the promise and Ishmael was from a, a, a concubinage um, affair. So we can understand that why the Isaac would have been chosen and, 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 and over Ishmael. But here you have now two boys from the same mother, and the same father, then why was one then chosen over the other? And it is God's prerogative. It's not that God um, said predestined Jacob to be the one and, 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 and Isaac to be, to, be, to, be, to be banished. But God's foreknowledge saw yes. that Jacob was going to be the one Faithful and true. Well, more faithful and true. Because but Pastor, I just jump in for two seconds. Yes. If you notice that Abraham's situation was that Ishmael was now a somewhat an outside child. Right. So, by virtue of things, really, Ishmael should not get true. Mm -hmm. But why didn't Esau get true? Esau should have gotten true because he was the perfect fit. For the entire of the for first all of the, born to first born, mm -hmm. born of the same parents, everything was in line. But that is how God works. Right. God does not act, do things in our timing. Mm -hmm. And one person said, "Do his thing in his kairos time, the opportune time, the right time, using the right persons." And 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 the illustrations now are leading up, friends, to where you see now where the Gentiles would have been chosen because the Jews who were from the lineage and should have accepted the Messiah, continue to hold on to righteousness by works, righteousness through the law and not righteousness through Christ. And, and then you will see as we go into next, as we start next week, that it is only a remnant from Israel, only a remnant was, 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 was saved. But the, the, the extension was given to all God's people. And the Gentiles came in like a flood. Though they were not a part of the chosen nation, they are now Abraham's seed and here according to the promise. What a study. Thank you very much. We trust and hope that as you dug deep with us, you were truly blessed. Gentlemen, thank you very much. And may God continue to bless us. See you next week as we pick up and continue on with God's promised people. Let us pray. Father in heaven, thank you for this amazing study and continue to reveal your truth to us and it is our determination to be a part of your chosen people. Here's according to the promise. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.
Sabbath. I feel like I haven't seen my friends in a long time. How are you doing? How are you doing on Facebook, on YouTube, WCCN, Bless TV, the deaf community? How are you doing? Well, go on. Type in the chat, man, and let me know what's going on. We haven't caught up in a while, but I'm happy to be here. I'm grateful to be able to sit in this forum with, with, you soon know who it is. <laughs> and so if you're just joining us, welcome to our online worship experience. You have just been fed by the Beyond the Surface team. Now you're about to be inspired in the Mentorship Connection segment. And if you're joining us for the first time, my name is Kamara Dixon. And I am just ready to get into this ministry. It's not an interview, it's a ministry. Somebody is about to be encouraged. Now, there are so many verses in the Bible that we use to, to encourage us. 
What's your favorite? Well, I have uh, have several of them that I draw on from time to time. One of them is uh, John 16, 33, which says, I have said these things to you, Kamara, that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And I hear God saying to me in Isaiah 41, verse 10, Girl, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Then him say again in Philippians 4, 6-7, Look here, man. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God and the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And I say amen to that. God is in the business of saving us and he'll go to the point of death, right? Just for us. Is there a moment in your life when all that you believe in, all that you pray about, preach about, testify about, you question it? That you've been so embattled to the point where you wonder, where is God? We all have those experiences. And to share his story this evening, his story of triumph, his story of resilience, his story which is miraculous, his story which is still being told, is our beloved, a very humble soldier for Christ, a man that I respect to the core, a man that will tell us, we're going in the verse, yeah? On in verse. You will see him on Sabbath mornings with the young people. You by now have guessed it, right? Yes, Pastor Andre Wallace. And I see people in the house jumping up and down right now, you know, Pastor Wallace. <laughs> Indeed. Yes. You know, it's a joy to be back with my friends. Yes. And I'm still their brother and their friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, yes. Love that line. Still your brother, still your friend. And he is here to share with us his journey. We know it wasn't a secret. He didn't keep it away from us that he's a human being. Um, although he's responsible for the flock, the shepherd at times, they experience tribulation. They experience illnesses. And he did not hide it from us. He rallied the troop and... We prayed for him, and he's here to tell his story. Pastor. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. And we're here to give thanks. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. You know, we have to give thanks. I always yes. say to persons, come on, that it's prayer in the beginning. Yes. And the beyond. Wherever uh, that beyond takes us. Yes. Yeah? Well, that's our new tagline. It's prayer in the beginning and the beyond. Pastor, how are you doing? I am I'm grateful. And you're looking I wonderful. Am, thank you so much. You're God welcome. has been marvelous marvelous he has been marvelous i can't complain he wow. has been good and i just want to give him thanks thanks i mean pastor i could pinch you to say is this pastor wallace because we remember just the other day pastor you were we all got our scare that what if you know but he is here vibrant joyful as ever pastor let's get right into it tell us what happened Let's start there, yes. All right. Uh, before I even say what happened, Kamar, let me first say a big thank you. Right. You know, I, I want to say thanks. There are some persons when I was to do surgery and we did a blood drive, they just, persons call and to pass, I want to give blood and they just went and, Kamar, let me tell you something. I, I knew when I was, that was done, in the back of my mind, right. I was simply saying to that, I want also that just in case, I want to get as much blood that some could go to the Adventist blood bank. <laughs> Mercy. So even while you were there yeah, processing yeah. the need for it, you were thinking beyond yeah, that. Man, I, was, I wanted the blood bank to, be, to get an extra boost. Wow. You know, that other persons, other Adventists, other persons who may get sick and need surgery would benefit. And I, I think God worked. So I want to say thank you if you gave blood. Thank you so much. We appreciate that very much. All right. And uh, you prayed 
the God be the glory. Great things he has done. I, I can't, I mean, my wife and my children, oh Lord, they are so wonderful. Uh, my mother, uh, my in-laws, my friends and family, my, there are so many, my aunt, girl, and others. There are so many persons I could have said thanks. The president, what a tremendous man. He is, and the administrators here at Westmaker Conference, the committee, the directors, the office staff, uh, the church that I was then, the Farm Heights District, the Farm Heights and the Connor Court Bridge, tremendous, Pastor Williams, <laughs> <laughs> tremendous. You know, uh, I have friends who I didn't know I have, right. you know, persons who I have never met. Yes. Uh, prayer warriors from all oh. over the world. We have persons who don't go to church. Wow. Come as a pastor, I'm praying for you. <laughs> uh, persons who I want to baptize soon. You know yourself. The pastor, uh, you may want to baptize me, the pastor. One person can say, I'm, Pastor, I was hoping that you would be the one to baptize me. <laughs> but it has just been amazing, Kamara. I mean, persons who opened their home, Sister Carla and her husband and family. I mean, tremendous. It's just amazing. It will take weeks and weeks and eternity to tell the full story. Mercy, I'm grateful. mercy. Uh, Pastor, you know, the joy you are giving right now, it's just contagious. You know, and, and I can tell that something happened in your life. And um, But the devil had plans. And I hear God saying, okay, so devil, this is your move. Well, watch me move. Pastor, I want you to describe to us uh, when you heard that you have... I, I'm going to just give you the opportunity to tell us, Pastor, what they told you was wrong with you. All right, so I like to put it like this, Kamara, that, you know, uh, God is just amazing. Last year, when my, my daughter right. started high school, you know, my daughter is, is unique. She carries some of my traits and some of my wife's traits and her own unique personality. I, I still try to try to understand her. She's just an amazing person. But when she's motivated, she's she's motivated, you know? And so I remember at some point in her uh, sixth grade years, it was hard sometimes to get her out of it. But when she started high school... <laughs> Yes. My girl was up early. I mean, her brother was awake. Uh, the bed, she got dressed and ready. She didn't want to be late for school. And right. that was just amazing. And as parents, though sometimes would have appreciated a few extra minutes, yes. we wanted to honor that kind of zeal. And so we began to get up early with her. Mm -hmm. And so overall, as a family, we began to have breakfast a little bit earlier than mm -hmm. normal so that we could beat the traffic and be out to have them to school at 8 o'clock. Right. And that target for her was met. And I really want to thank her for that. And ever since then, we, it has changed the whole, how we operate in the mornings, mm. you know, because we wanted to honor that. And so I began to have some, what I call, slight stomach issues, I call it, uh, Kamara. Because mm. for me, I don't know for others, but once you change your eating habits, your, it, your pattern, you know, your body sometimes may rebel. And so I began to have some strange feelings and uh, I felt that I should just, you know, press it for a week, over a week, two weeks and say, all right, this is getting a little bit uncomfortable. I don't complain a lot, as you know. I, I try not to complain. I tend to keep things in, but it can get concerning. And so I went to the doctor and uh, he said I should just do a random uh, stomach, an ultrasound of my stomach. And... Uh, I did that because I was Philippine, somewhere on my left, somewhere down the side. And so I did that and I, I waited <laughs> for the scan to, to come. And I, I remember I checked my phone and I think I did a scan within, I think, say, I think the week of the 20-something of September or thereabout. So I would have expected to get the results by the Thursday or the Friday. I didn't hear from the doctor. Uh, Monday, I got a call from my beloved doctor, Granville Miller, a tremendous man. He's very uh, interested in his patients. And so he called me and I was like, I don't, I don't know my ex-doctor to call me at that time when he called. I think it was a Sunday or the Monday he called, whichever it was. And uh, 
He said, Pastor, I wanted to talk to you, um, but I wanted to, to go through the weekend. And I'm like, hmm, this sounds interesting. You piqued my interest, doctor. What's on your mind? And he began outlining, you know, well, you, you did an ultrasound recently, and uh, this is good. I like what this looks like. That is okay. However, <laughs> there is what looks like a mass somewhere, and uh, it's big. It's about the size of a small orange or a grapefruit. So it was a, a big, a big mass. And he said, well, I may have to recommend that you see a surgeon because whatever it is, it may require some kind of, of surgery. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> and I, I began to think about that for a while. And he began to discuss some other things and say a number of things, which I can't remember all that he said because my mind began to, to think of a number of things. And from there, he referred me to Dr. Hall, who was the general surgeon, uh, who requested that I do a CT scan, which was done not long after that, about a week or so. And then when that came back, uh, it, it said that there was a suprarenal mass that was located either on or above my adrenal gland. Now, right. the adrenal gland is on my right side here. Right. Where the pain was down here. So the random scan revealed and coincidentally that this this mass was here right. uh, sitting quite comfortable right. growing quite rapidly mm. uh, and gave me no warning signs no sign of anything and so they felt that to get more information you know doctor they don't want you to worry right but from that I began to share with my wife I told the family uh, we didn't yet tell the children all the details. We, I shared with my in-laws and others that this is the situation. And then now uh, the MRI came back and gave some more details. All right? And it pretty much said that uh, this tumor, and interestingly, I think I did a, another ultrasound sometime after the first one, which said that the tumor was slightly bigger than the first, the time. first time. That was September this one was now in October. But anyway, the MRI said that the mass is malignant. You know what that means, right. Kamara? It's cancerous. It means that it is cancerous. Mm. All right. Now, they didn't know the fullness of it, per se. Maybe they did and they didn't tell me. Uh, but either way, what was even more... I was just shocking, but interesting was that the, the mass began to shear. You know, it, it wasn't selfish. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't selfish at all. You know, so it began to extend itself. And so it went into my vena cava. You know, that's the main, vein. main vein to the heart. Right. That big vein there, right? And God is so good that it didn't go through the middle of it or all of it. It right. went to a portion of it and then invaded my liver. Mercy. And by the time it was discovered, they didn't know how far, but it was probably 50 to 40, near 60% of my liver was already affected by that uh, mass. So, but Pastor, <laughs> that sounds... Uh, the Bible says be anxious about nothing. But that, is a, that alone is enough to make me anxious. How did you respond to that news? What was your response? Well, yes. <laughs> you know, as human beings, you have all the emotions, right? Right. But my first thought was really, uh, you know, and, and those told me, no, you know, my father died when I was, was, when he was fairly young. My father died when I, when he was probably in his late 20s. And growing up as a young boy, I had that in the back of my mind. Lord, what if I'm going to die young? Like my dad. And so the first thing that popped in my mind uh, was, and I'm like, no, I mean, my wife, my children. I, I mean, I don't want my children to be fatherless. fatherless. No. And uh, I began to think, and I say, you know, Kamara, I look at this thing, and I say, this thing, this thing is big, because it seemed as if the enemy has placed mm. a ticking time bomb like a landmine, yes. and I just stepped on it in my heart. Mm -hmm. So any move I made, I make. If I don't it. take it out, I'm going to die. If I try to take it out, 
it seemed like I might die. Hmm. So what do I do? I said, God, <laughs> I, I, I can't keep this one to myself. Right. I said, honey, I call my wife. I said, dear, I'm thinking of sharing this with the, the church. But, but before that, Pastor, how did she take it? <sighs> you know how us females, how we are. I can't tell you that it was easy. Mm. I remember one... Because my wife, sometimes she tried to put the best outside. Mm -hmm. Very pleasant lady. I hope you didn't touch that. <laughs> Sorry. But what happened is that um, she... It was tough. It was really hard. I remember one night... I sent a text to her. I said, dear, no matter what. That's all right, Pastor. Just take your time. It's, it's all right. We're with you in this. Just do the best you can to take care of me. And uh, she probably didn't say it until like a day or two after. It was late at night. And she got up and she saw it. I just heard something while sleeping. And she was crying, she was crying, she was crying. And all I could do was, I got up and I just hugged her. And we cried together. We cried together. It was tough. It was tough. It was tough. But we said, God, um, we have to trust you. Yes. And I felt, uh, as I always preach, I say, I believe that prayer can change things. Amen. And I said, God, you have a church that is not just in the Prophecy. Farm Heights district. Yes. You have a church that is across St. James and across the four parishes of West Jamaica Conference and across Jamaica Union and across the division and across the world. And so, God, there must be one person that you will hear and I say I'm going to have to share this because this is bigger than, bigger than any way right. me take it, uh, me in a problem. a problem so this is in God's hands and right. I say I'm going to just let the world and my friends and family know that I need you to pray for me that God will intervene and I tell something I tell mm -hmm. something I, 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 I felt that God was going to do Something, something remarkable. And, yes. But the reality is, Kamara, I said, God, I saw Elijah. I saw Elisha. I know the scenarios. Right. And I know that even if I know you're still a mighty God, that's but I'm right. going to trust you. That's it. <laughs> I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you. And that's what we did. We, we began to pray. And, and God, God, is just, amazing. God is just amazing. Yes. Kamara, I, I, I tell you something that there is a saying in the book of Matthew, and I said it to my colleagues who came once to see me while I was at home, and I said to them, the Bible said that the love of many will wax cold, cold, but what we tend to focus on a lot is the cold part. Mm. It didn't say all. So it means that the love of many, many. will also grow stronger. Yes. And he's like, you know, Pastor, that's a solid message. Solid you know? message yeah. And I said, I saw persons calling me, Kamara, to pray with me. I have never been prayed for so much in all my life. Some short prayer, some long, long prayer, <laughs> some prayer voice note, some prayer text, yes. some people call me on prayer line. Churches pray and people, I mean, I felt so loved. I, I felt that God was going to do something remarkable, if not for me, for somebody else. Wow. And that was amazing. That's amazing, Pastor. And what I'm getting is that though this was difficult for you, you're here saying, God is going to do something for you, but also for somebody. You are not just thinking about yourself, and that says a lot about you as, a, as an individual. Pastor, now it's time to do the surgery. I mean, I know that was daunting, but, but let, me, let me ask something before we go to the surgery. I hope it's okay to ask. The kids, the children, how did they handle this news? All right. Now, God has blessed us with some tremendous children. Mm. Tremendous. Yes. You 
You know I love them. Let's take your time. I'm hard on them, but they'll tell you. <laughs> because I want them to be the best that they can be. I understand. And I said to them all the time that they have not begun to tap who they can be. And I said to them that when they are who they are, I mean, they are, you know, I don't want them to ever compare themselves with anybody. anybody. Just be who God wants them to be. And... Uh, we try our best to, to guide them through this process. And right. so we, we level with them. We share with them in phases. We didn't want to give them all at once. I think at one point my son had a panic attack. I right. think my daughter had some issues that she, they dealt with it different. differently. But as good as we were at home, they were okay. But when they went out, you know, some people are... <laughs> <laughs> I would say they are not wise, but they are no they're tact. not very tactful. They're not very tactful. Compassionate. Because some questions they ask and what they may say to their children right. at home. We come to school and say, John, Deb, you know, mm -hmm. that, your, your father's sick, your father have what can I cancel? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, they bombard, and they bombarded them with so many things, you know. It was it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't easy for them when they are not at home. That's right. Because even adults sometimes ask them some stuff that was, I felt was just not nice. But they dealt with it. But bravely. they were tremendous children. Yes, um, yes. And I tell you something too, how God is so good. It was the roughest period of their lives. Mm. My daughter's first year in high school, my son last, and first, first term in grade six last year in, 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 um, in, in prep school. Mm -hmm. So it was a tough time. Mm. Uh, when the whole surgery thing came about, they had to leave home because we had to be in Kingston. They had been traveling back and forth from Trelawney to school. It was hard on them, but they didn't complain. I mean, they, and tell us something how God is good. You know what he did? Tell God me. helped them to have one of their best terms. Wow. My son had one of his best, best. Uh, results in all of his school life, mm -hmm. as it were. My daughter did well in her first term. And I said, God, you must have had your hand in this. Definitely. To keep them tired and, mm -hmm. and, and all these issues, their father being sick and the uncertainties, but yet you were there. Sustaining the family. And I must lift my hat off to Brother and Sir Franklin and, and Sister mm -hmm. Elaine Monroe and others who was like their driver. I mean, there's, I mean, God, so many people showed love and mm -hmm. we just can't say enough thank you uh you have been so good and we thank god for that but yes it was rough on them yes but god kept them god kept them <laughs> pastor and i just looked at the verse again in isaiah 41 10 do not fear i am with you these texts come alive when you are embattled or faced with some trying situations and he was there for you he was there for your children he was there for your wife it did not eliminate the pain but he was there you saw him sustaining you. Now you had, what's the name of the, the condition that they, they said you? All right, so a lot of persons didn't figure it out up front. Even myself struggled with it. But right. the fact is that I had stage four cancer. Stage four. And mm -hmm. you know what that means? Because once a cancer moves from one part of your body to another part, right. it's stage four. And stage four is, you know, <laughs> right. Yep. And so... After they didn't want to do a biopsy of the mass because mm -hmm. it was aggressive, they didn't know a lot of things would happen. If they inject it, it could just burst open and mm -hmm. cause the entire body. So they had to wait until it is taken out for them to diagnose the problem. And right. so when the diagnosis came back, it was adrenocortical carcinoma. Uh. <laughs> Basically, it is cancer of the adrenal gland. Right. All right, and the adrenal gland, there are two basic areas of it. You have this small part, I think my wife says it's called the medulla. She's a more medical term, right. <laughs> whatever it is. A small part in the middle, mm -hmm. and then the outer part, part called the cortex, right. I think. Right there, I think that's it, cortex, right? And so a cancer in this small part yes. tend to give you a lot of signs and like high blood pressure and right. all some other things. So Did you experience any of those? I had nothing. Oh. Because I had cancer in the cortex. So the okay. cancer started in the cortex, which is the mm -hmm. outer part which is a bit dangerous because mm -hmm. he, basically what's happening here is that I look smiley and happy, right. but there's a cancer that is inside me, literally killing me. Mm. 
And I did, did know, not know. I did know. I think the devil wanted to kill me. Early. Uh, early. Mm -hmm. But God said, not you yet. know, no, 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 no. Because my daughter, the whole change and everything, and everything happened so fast. All right? Because within pretty much less than two months, I was doing surgery. It was really rapid. So out of nowhere, because it, that, when the tumor began to, 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 to spread, it could have easily gone up. To the heart. To the heart. Right. Or the lungs. But God directed it. Redirected it. I tell you. I'm telling you, I man. I tell you. He directed the <laughs> way. And, and uh, it went through the vein. But there was, so when the surgery was done, they cut out a part of the vein, you know. Right. Take it out entirely. And patch it back. And patch it with man-made material. Mercy. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> uh, so God intervened. Yes, to miraculously. Check what could have gone worse. Mm -hmm. And when they finally took out uh, the adrenal gland, uh, about 60 or 70 percent of my liver, mm -hmm. my gallbladder, part wow. of my vena cava. So I'm a, I'm a part of you, you know. <laughs> It's a part of me that's left. Wow. <laughs> right now. So it is indeed a miracle. It's pastor. a miracle. And I tell you something, Kamara. Mercy. Uh, every day above ground mm. for me is a miracle. Miracle. So whether it's one day, two days, ten days, or twenty more years. Yes. Whatever God will do, I have asked him to make a miracle of me. Every and I believe he is he has doing done that. that. What a powerful testimony, Pastor. I tell you, I could pinch you to find out if you are truly real. God is real. God is good. If you are going through something, this is testament to that God is still not done with you yet. Pastor, how long? Tell the people how long the surgery lasted. All right. So, interestingly, you know, I, the doctor said that, you know, a surgery like this could be probably anywhere between six to eight hours, uh, which is quite a long time. That's like a day's work. Six to eight. <laughs> six to eight. It right. could be about six to eight hours. And I, I remember I was going through my phone and um, I saw somebody like somebody was texting during the whole process and right. updating the constituency and, and, and like someone said, well, it wasn't as bad as they thought at first. And so they probably be in and out now in a few hours. <laughs> but at the end of almost 15 hours right. of surgical operation, 15 hours, 15, almost 15 Mercy. hours, we realized that this wasn't something simple. It was a major thing. And, and the truth is, we don't even fully know. The doctors haven't told me everything as yet. Uh, we don't even fully know everything. But uh, we, that happened in the surgery. Because what happened to them? They even had the ultrasound machine and everything in there. They had several surgeons were involved in the process. I mean, I tell you, almost 15 hours. That oh, is amazing. Amazing. Uh, that's a miracle in and of itself. To be Almost here. 15 hours passed. Oh, just before you went into the surgery, though, what were some of the thoughts that were parading your mind? What were you thinking? What were you feeling? <sighs> I tell you something. A lot of things went through my mind. Uh, you want me to tell it immediately before the surgery, a week before, or days before? What should I prefer to hear? All right. Tell me the day before. The day before yes, surgery. Yes, the day All before. Right. So, <laughs> the day before surgery, I was lying in a strange place. God bless you, Sister Ropa. Uh, in a strange place. Uh, and in a, on a strange bed. A tremendous host. And I said, God, what are you going to do? And I remember I asked God, so God, if you will show me ten things, whether I live a day or two days beyond the surgery, I want to serve you with my whole heart. And I like to write things on my diary. And I began to write and to check. And when I reached nine, I began to get a little nervous, you know. <laughs> and then when I said ten, the ten things I asked God for happened during that time. What you say? I said, God, you're amazing. You're amazing. And so the morning of the surgery, when I was about to go into surgery, I said, God, do something amazing. And even if, if so I must pray for somebody. So I, I prayed before I went into surgery. You must pray for somebody. I must pray for somebody mm, before. Yes. And I prayed in that surgical room for the surgeons and the assistants. And I said, God, I don't know who these persons are. But whatever you do, save them. Help somebody to know 
that you are a great savior. Amazing, absolutely amazing, amazing, amazing. Tremendous, profound, what a testimony and what a God. We're gonna take a short break now for a special musical rendition. We continue this remarkable journey of faith, of miracle, of whatever you wanna call it, just after this. Stay tuned. Oh 
Amen. What a song. What a testimony. What a God. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Ovis. Uh, Pastor, mm, yes. as we were you know, talking the, the, about... I must say, I, I mean, I, I love to hear Brother Ovis sing. Yes. He's just one of my favorite ministers. ministers. He is amazing, he man. Is. Tremendous. Tremendous man of God. He is. Everybody just type tremendous in the chat. That is our word right here at West Jamaica Conference. Tremendous. You don't just type it because God is tremendous, right? <laughs> so, Pastor... We were, we were now recounting the issues, uh, the, the destination, the journey. So I'm going to ask you to just speak up from where we left off. You know, what I can say, Kamara, is that uh, I, all right, I, I don't know how to, to ask for help sometimes. Because, mm. <laughs> you know, when I grew up without a father mm. and my mother, a tremendous woman, who mm. went abroad to try to make ends meet for us, you know, you grow up basically doing things from trial and error. Some things you try, sometimes you succeed, sometimes you don't, right. you know. And so when we're told that the surgery will cost approximately $8 million, Jamaica. Jamaican dollars. Wow. I'm like, whoa. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. I said, God, this one, mm -hmm. you have to do something amazing. <laughs> yes. And uh, I remember I reached out to uh, the conference you know, and uh, a tremendous supporting administration we have, and God bless them. Yes. And I tell us something, with the wonderful insurance company we have, and with some friends and some family, our conference stood by us, I can tell you that God provided every, every single cent Mercy. of that $8 million. Mm -mm. Isn't God good, Kamara? Look here, I don't know what to say. God what is can amazing. we say about how good this man is? God is amazing. Eight million dollars and everybody came on board. Yes, God, yeah. God, God worked. That's what he meant when he says a cattle upon a thousand hills belong to me. It's not your duty to worry about how things will work out. Leave the solution to him. I said to, I said to Sister Wallace, Wallace, you know, I think God's going to provide. I don't know how. How? <laughs> But he will. And I'm like, God, you have to back me up on this one. <laughs> <laughs> but he came through. He and, came uh, through. You know, Kamara, mm -hmm. I remember one day, and right. I want to say this to somebody, because yes. this is mentorship. Yes, yes. You never know what a person is going, going through. through. And it's important to be a good friend and to love people. That's perfect. I remember somebody, I learned of a situation, and I was going through my sickness now. I didn't even tell them that I, was, I had cancer and I may die. Right. And Oof. I learned of a situation. This person... So, Pastor, the situation is such and such, and uh, I'm in a bad state, and I need some help. And I'm like, I look at my account. I don't have anything there. I look what I could borrow, not much. And I sent a little bit to the person of mm. what I didn't have. Just a little wow. bit. You know, and the person was like, Pastor, this is, just, this is so amazing. And he told me the amount of things he was able to do with a little bit. Wow. And I'm saying to myself that he wouldn't know that mm -mm. I didn't even have anything. <laughs> <laughs> but little is much. Much more to give. But I did because I felt that sometimes I'm not going to worry. I, I am sometimes unwise, I think, um, Kamara. Because sometimes I don't worry so much about me. But the I think other about person. the other person. How are they going to make it? How are mm. they? And, and so what get me the most through all of this is right. just my family. What will happen if? And so I was, I was trying to say, wife, honey, be strong. Yes. And, I, and I'm telling her, be strong. And, and how can and I tell a wife to be strong when she's, she's the closest person to you? That's hard. Yeah, it is hard. Yeah, gosh, yes. she must be. <laughs> but it the fact hard. is that, I mean, I gave a little bit to this person. Mm -hmm. And when some persons call me as a pastor, um, I said this for you. I want to do this. And I, and, I'm, and I know that these persons don't, they don't mm -hmm. have money like some person. That right. they, they are not a bush to it. Right. God bless his dear soul. Right. They are not a, a LeBron James. You know, there are some poor people who are trying to make ends meet and they are giving. Give, I didn't ask someone in a camera. I didn't ask. I don't know how to ask. Okay, so this, this is so God work, Pastor. <laughs> and people started calling and say, Pastor, surgery yes. is expensive. But you know what is even more expensive? <laughs> Living. <laughs> <laughs> Living with cancer and after cancer. Cancer. It's, it is tough. It, yes. is, it has been tough, yes, I tell yes, you. Um, yes, yes. Because even what you did have, cancer took that. Plus, what you didn't have, it is taking that. So, it has been, uh, and I want to say to somebody, 
Don't be afraid to, to help another brother. Even sometimes when you, you yourself have a need, don't say, me have a problem. Sometimes mm -hmm. your little problem may just be the key to open oh, the yes. door for God to do something remarkable for you. Oh, Pastor, that is... Uh, I don't know. It is, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, um, oh, boy, I'm happy you. you said it costs even more to live with cancer because that's now going to usher me into the next question. You are cancer free. Well, put it this way. All right. As far as the scan say, mm -hmm. I am cancer free. Okay. I want you to say amen and praise God. Praise the Lord. And shout amen in the chat. So what happened is that I did a, an ultrasound and a CT scan. I think it was January into February. Mm -hmm. All right. And what those show is that the, the man-made patch that is still on my, in my vein mm -hmm. is working well. Right. Praise, praise the Lord. It's not... Um, clot up, as the doctor said, can, can clot up at any time, and that okay. lights out. Ooh. Right? So, it's a miracle. So, I'm on blood thinners, which is, you know, Ooh. to pretty much keep the blood from getting too slow. Right. I didn't mention that my father died, and it is believed he had a heart attack. Heart attack. Because he was getting a little bit masculine, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> like, a man, <laughs> like a manly, you know. And so, I realized he, he probably had high cholesterol, which I inherited. Oh. So I had that, which I discovered some years ago. Right. And I'm on a medication for that too. Right. All right. So, you know, it's been interesting. Yeah. And so what happened now is that, um, where was I? I, was, I, I got <laughs> carried away. My thought went somewhere a while ago. Right. Dad, yeah, so, so we were talking about, you were, you were going to tell me how um, the surgery, the, the, uh, you had to, that thing, the patch that yes, they yes. placed on right. the vein, it's working well. Right, so I was about to that CT, yeah, so, right. so the CT scan, so, so the, what was dangerous was the tumor and its remnant. Mm -hmm. So when they used the, the ultrasound machine during surgery, it showed where and how far the tumor had invaded the liver. Right. So it showed you because the, the, the tumor has a different kind of, it gives a different imaging, imaging on, the, on, the, on the scan. So they were able to cut out the liver and cut out a portion away from it. So the tumor, they, they felt that they got all of the tumor out. They felt? They felt. All right. And so that was November 25 last year. Praise God. Right. For the Sabbath day. That's another story all wow. by itself. <laughs> all right. And he, when we got by the last, the latest scan, it says that there is no tumor and a bullet in the, on the CT and scan. The, no tumor. No tumor. Praise the Lord. And that's amazing. Absolutely. That is amazing. And I, and I, and I praise God yes. for that. That is tremendous. However, here's the thing now, Kamara. Right. Uh, on a human person level, you have to look at what they have identified as some realities. So... You have what you call the, the kind of cancer that I have, which is quite rare. Mm -hmm. And so right now, the doctors, I have to do a test that costs almost $100,000. I've done it yet. Which is pretty much to do what you call, it's like a, it's like a, they do a swab. Basically, check my genes to see if I am inclined to certain kind of cancer. Oh. And if my children are also, are also at risk for a certain kind of cancer are early cancer signs. So that I need to do. Haven't been able to do that just yet. And so we need to do that because I want to take any precaution for my children, right. anything we can do. Right. Because the enemy works through many means. Oh, and yes. don't be fooled, friends. We, we have to uh, be conscious that we live in a human world, mm -hmm. but we still serve a divine a God. Divine God, Amen. And so you don't want to give the enemy too much to play with. So what they, I learned recently, which is probably about two months or three months, after the surgery, from a three months plus after surgery, that because the diagnosis took a while to, to get back. And so after surgery, the sample that they took out was sent to be tested. That did not come back until, I think, January because of the holiday season. And then that which they tested in Jamaica, they had to be sent abroad God. to be tested again. And so when the diagnosis finally came, it says adrenal cortical carcinoma. When we were referred to a, an oncologist, 
One of them said that based on what the Cancer Research Society has to say, this kind of cancer is handled in three ways, usually. Right. Number one is to do surgery, which is the first step. Which you've done. Which I did. Right. Uh, the next two steps were steps that we weren't aware of, say, two months or a little over a month or so ago. You learned this afterwards. Learned that somewhat afterwards. Mm -hmm. I know the, the doctors kept saying, asking, have you done chemo as yet? You know, that's the surgeons. Mm -hmm. um, and we're like, you know, why, they keep why are they pushing asking? And, pushing right. and asking that? Because, you know. So in our mind, we felt that everything was pretty much okay. Uh, but here's what the Cancer Research Society says. It said that basically, this kind of cancer has a high chance of reoccurring. Oh, so it can come back. So it can come back. And what is even more sobering is because the tumor was very large. I remember when we, one of the radiation oncologists um, at CRH, they were talking while we were there, and they looked at it and they're like, wow, wow. <laughs> it's a large tumor. It's a large, it was a large tumor. So basically, yeah, what do you call it? The cancer bed. So where the tumor was, like a big area in my body. Yes. So though they took it out and cut out, etc. The, the They're saying that the cancer bed needs to be treated okay. from the human perspective. Right, I get Now, the that. challenge with the cancer bed is that it's an area of the body where it kept moving, so, so you're breathing. So that's what you are currently dealing with now, right. so the treatment of the cancer That is the second bed. phase, which is right. radiation therapy that oh. they recommend. I was hoping that I didn't have, didn't to, do have that, to do that, but it seems quite likely. And then from there, no. I may have to do the next one, which is chemotherapy. So basically, according to the tests, you are cancer-free, but you are to be maintained in three phases. You've done one already, with, which is a surgery. The second is the treatment of the cancer bed, which is through radiation. And the third one, you say, is the... Chemotherapy. So basically, Kamara, why I said that what the scan showed is that because the tumor was very active and it had a lot of blood... Blood... What? droplets and clot like things in it. They're not sure if, say, if something went off somewhere and gone somewhere over my body and maybe it worked in somewhere that they didn't see from the scan that they did. And so I have to do a PET scan, which is about 1,200 US dollars. Uh, and that's in Florida. Because... Oh, so in, these, what we're talking about is not offered here in Jamaica? No, the kind of radiation that I need... Right, let's describe that one. Yet, uh, I don't remember the name. It's in a letter somewhere. It's kind of fancy. Mm -hmm. But it's one that pretty much has to be able to work with the body that keeps moving. Oh. Yeah. And so the doctor explained to me from CRH that uh, they, they have some good machines here and they could do a good job. But, but. you run the risk of damaging other organs oh. because of where the cancer bed is. And so there are some places abroad that, that can do that. And so that's a referral. And what that's will that it. cost? <laughs> I mean, fast your laugh. <laughs> okay. Uh. Well. <laughs> All right. Let me just give you a, a, a ballpark figure. Right. In some areas, the, the starting treatment for that is 50,000 US dollars. And it can go up to, the, to 600,000 US, US dollars. US dollars. Wow. Uh, we got one that is... Somewhere in the region of twenty-two thousand mm -hmm. uh, dollars, which is uh, a good a good change it in is. terms of, of money. All right, and we're so grateful for the conference they are trying, but it's a lot, and it's we're gonna lot. need some help. So you look Definitely. at that plus the radi um, probably chemo, which may cost over a million dollars, plus you're looking at air flight and stay and mm -hmm. stuff. You know. It could well be a good 30,000 US dollars yes. we're looking at. Um, you know, but we serve our big God. We do our, I, I was thinking, you know, earlier that God, you have to do it again. And that, is, that doesn't include, I have to be on certain special medications now. Mm -hmm. And because I believe also in the whole issue of the body healing itself. Right. There are also some other options that we're looking at, mm -hmm. which cost at least, yeah, looking at 1500 to 3000 US, US dollars, dollars, sometimes every three to six months. Um, that is in addition to other things. And it's, you have to think about 
just trying to live from this day. Thinking right. of multiple visits to, to doctors. So it's, <laughs> it's a journey. It is. And so when I ask if I'm cancer-free, by faith, one. I believe I am. Mm -hmm. uh, but from the human perspective, there are realities that we have to check out just to ensure right. we don't give the enemy any additional room to work. Being with. proactive. And so we, that's where we are in terms of the journey. We have to get the radiation treatment done. Which is a special, um, kind, special of kind of radiation, radiation which is available abroad. abroad. 22,000. $22, right. is the starting US. where that we have gotten so far. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if we'll get any better quote or whatever, but that is where it is at. Plus the PET scan, which has to be done before that. I'm hoping, Kamara, mm -hmm. that the PET scan will say there is no cancer anywhere in my body. I'm hoping right. that will say that. We're hoping I and believe by for faith. that. Yes. But even then, just the whole reality that stage four cancer is not a boy business. Mm -mm. It's a, a serious thing. Mm -hmm. And so the doctors feel that these steps are, are necessary. Are necessary. Wow. Pastor, this has been a tremendous experience for you. Um, and I must say that you are being kept. It's obvious to me that God has been keeping you. And he has surrounded you with many persons to support you, to assure you. You're a man of faith. And there's just no way God has taken you thus far. I will not complete what he has started. You know, Kamara... I just wanted to say again publicly, so somebody, thank you. Yes. You know, whoever you you are, I don't want to call anybody's name. There are some persons who call recently who say, Pastor, we are willing to try to do this for you. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, those who who did for us, my family, friends, um, strangers. One, la a lady called me. I got a call. I think it was from Sister Mary mm -hmm. Kamara, who said that Pastor, I have a a contact that that permission to give, um, to share your number with them. This person has cancer. Mm -hmm. And the person wanted to give the something from my cancer journey. Mm -hmm. I mean, I mean, God bless you. God bless you. Yes. There, are some, there are some persons who, they don't know you. I mean, I, one of the things that was on my mind is that um, I told her that I didn't tell her the, one of the experiences I had. Give us a few more minutes, please. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell her, um, Kamara, that um, when the cancer thing was revealed, it was at a time when we were, we were being... <laughs> You know, we did a quarterly some, some years ago. Crucibles. Yes, I was I going through some one. serious crucible. crucible. I don't complain about things. For me, once I can, the car can drive from point A to point B. Yes, once there's gas, I'm fine. If I don't have any money in my pocket, if I have to give my last for my children to go to school, as long as they are okay, my wife is fine. Even if I don't have anything, as long as the car can move and I can go out and visit my members and pray with somebody and do ministry, I am fine. I said, Amy, say, you think I say work? And so he attacked the vehicles that we had. So my, our car had some issues, transmission. And the car that we had, the transmission wasn't easy. Someone promised and promised and promised that it would come. Uh, they located it abroad and they said they sent it. And it still hasn't reached. <laughs> so our car went down. And then every option to get another one was blocked. And then God bless my cousin. He's like yes. a brother, brother Kevin. Thank you so much, man. I love you. Uh, he loaned us his vehicle uh, when my mother was coming and my brother and others. And it was supposed to be for a month. It turned into almost six months. And he didn't complain. He didn't quarrel. And then God uh, was there and the devil again tried with his vehicle to cause problems. And we started spending money that we don't have. It was, an it was attack after attack after attack. And so one of the things that was on my mind, even after surgery and leading up to surgery, was the car. It's in the garage. We soon have to return this vehicle. Uh, we can't think, even begin to think about purchasing a new vehicle now because of what we're going through. Right. Lord, what are we going to do? And I was praying and I... For whatever reason, I just shared it with somebody. Um, one of my very good friends. God bless you, my brother. Tremendous man you are. And I didn't, I was just, just expressing to him. I didn't know why I said it. I just felt like I needed to say it to somebody. And he probably said it to somebody who decided to just intervene. And it wasn't something simple either. God bless you, sis. God bless you. And the car is not the best. But it's taking us from point A to point B. And that's what we ask God for. And so I just want to give him thanks for 
how amazing he has been. I don't know what he'll do from here on, Kamara. But one thing I want to let the world know and my friends and my colleagues to understand that I love the Lord. And I want you to understand too that you must, must increase your love for God. I've learned something through this experience, Kamara. That life is fleeting. This, hold my phone. This is nothing. I, I, I looked in my closet and, I, and I, I, I like to practice giving away things. But it, it has taken on a different level. I look at some shirts I had. For months they're there, not being used. I look at some suits I wore, there, not being used. And I'm like, God, all of this, I could have been gone. And what these things are, it doesn't make any sense. And I realized that, listen, my life can't be about me. I used to try to do a lot for people. And I was known to being the energy God, they call me. You know, I remember when I was, was in my first district. Uh, that's in the Vaughnsfield then. In those days, it was different from the Vaughnsfield now. Because we had Welcome Hall as a part of Vaughnsfield. And the bridge were praying that I get married. Because they said, Pastor, you have too much energy. <laughs> they were praying. And when I got married, they said, Hallelujah. We can't get more rest at night. <laughs> no, Pastor. You know, and so what Satan did, Kamara, he attacked the air of my body that has to do with my energy. The adrenal gland is that which produces yes. your energy. And so I am not my usual self. I can tell you that. But here's something. I don't know how not to be my usual self. <laughs> and so I try not to preach, but I can't, I can't help but preach. So if I only have half a liver, if it's growing back. If I don't have, if I only have one adrenal gland, I have to preach. So as long as I get the mic, I am going to preach. I can't, I can't help it because I tell you something, God is good. And I realize that no more than ever, we have to focus on the three angels' message. I realize no more than ever that we're living at the closing days of earth's history. All the things that are happening. And I realize that if there's ever a time we need to talk about the prophecies and to preach the prophecies and to let young people understand. You can't be joking with the devil. The devil don't like you, you know. You have to understand that all you have is God in your life. And those of you who have been uh, dilly-dallying and living in sin and concubinage and, and because of a little extra money you can't give your time to God, sickness caused me to realize that these things are foolish and futile and we must serve God. And so I've made up my mind, whatever may happen, I... I I'm not in district work now. For the first time in almost 20 years, I, I'm not in district work. The administration, God bless them. They want to give me a little less work to do. But the truth is, right now I'm planning more work for myself because the thing is, I can't help but want to do my part to advance God's, God's gospel. And if there's an idea, if there's something I can do to help somebody, if there's a way I can create to find something that will will impact somebody and cause them to fall in love with Jesus. I'm going to try. It may mean that I may have to beg. and I don't beg for me, but I may beg, beg for, for inverse. I may yes. beg for cornerstone. Yes. I may beg for real faith. But friends, it's my hope that God will take charge. Thank you so much, Kamara. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes. Thank you, administration. Thank you, pastors, the churches that prayed. Thank you so much for all you have done. The journey... Continues. continues. And so, here are just a few things I want to say as I close. No problem. I, I call it tip. I'm tipping the iceberg of God's possibilities. Oh, what he has done oh, now oh, is the only the tip, tip of how good he has been oh, to yes. me, yes. plus to you and to others. Yes. So there are more things that God will do, if not for me, for somebody else. Alright? And so, I am thanking God. Thanksgiving. That's my testimony. But then now, I will continue to ask for intercessor prayer. Yes. And then I will have to have some intentional decisions to make where my life is concerned. But I will press on in Jesus' name. I will press on in Jesus' name. This is so amazing. Mm. Isn't God amazing?
Wow. I'm speechless. I don't know what to say, but God is good, friends. Pastor has a profound testimony that he has shared with the world. And if you listen to the man, he's encouraging us, even though he is He has issues to deal with. He's encouraging us through that. And so the message this afternoon is, God is coming again. He is coming again. Whatever you're going through, whatever God has permitted to, to assail you, to come upon you, he has allowed it for a purpose. Pastor, his life has been spared to testify. And if you're in a spot right now and you cannot see the way out, like you're in a very dark, dark place, the only thing you can see is darkness. Do not give up, my friend. There is light at the end of the tunnel. And this is a message to me. This is a message to anybody who is halting between two opinions that God is with you. He is with you. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He may not answer our prayers the way we want him to, but he is certainly with us. What a profound testimony. I don't have space in me to contain it. <laughs> God is, is, he is, he is amazing. It is amazing. Pastor, before we wrap this up, your wife and children, they have been a strong tower in your life. And I'd just like you to speak to them before we <laughs> close this segment. You know, my wife is, is watching. I asked her if she wanted to, to join me <laughs> uh, on, 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 on mentorship. And uh, she was a little bit, you know, she, I don't think she would be able to handle that in her way. But I think she could. But there... I want to say to you that I believe you are stronger than you think. I believe that you have strength that, that God has given to you and abilities that are yet to be untapped. I say to John that I believe that God will make you into a powerful man of God one day. Just be humble. You, you, when you are who you will be, you don't have to worry about grades or anybody else. Your abilities are God-given, and you will be amazed as to how you can bless the world. I said to Dominique, Dominique, Dominique is sometimes a little shy, <laughs> but she is so creative, so caring. She has a heart that once it is fully surrendered to God, she will do amazing things in the hand of God. When she was born, the uncle said that she came up with her fists up. <laughs> like, you know, I am a strong woman. That's it. She has had her challenges. But when she is the woman that God will make her be, she'll be a tremendous tool in God hand, God's hands. I love you. My mother, I love you. Uh, my in-laws, Grandpa Franklin, Grandma Franklin, I love you. Uh, Tanya, Mommy, Girlie, I love you guys. Family, I love you all. I mean, there's so many persons. We, I mean, I love you. And friends, um, you know, whatever you may choose to do, if you want to reach out to help through the conference, that is fine. You know, I, I, I don't know how to ask for help. It's not in my nature, but God is able. If God has touched your heart and you want to do something, I mean, you know the conference contact. Just let them know it's towards... Pastor Wallace's next phase Please. of his journey. All right? Because the journey continues. It does. And so, thank you so much um, to our president, to the administration. Again, we commend you. Pastor Brown called me to pray. Pastor Braham has been with me along the journey. I mean, the support of our leaders at all the levels. We, we have a wonderful church. 
And I want to encourage somebody, if you are struggling with your faith, yes. hold, on. hold on. The Adventist church is still God's church. Yes. And he will still lead his people. Praise the Lord. Pastor, please look at me, sir. <laughs> I love you so much. You too, Kamara. Yes, sir. I really do. And um, as a church, we love you. And I'm just going to ask my online community to type, I love you, Pastor, in the chat. And I'm just saying, let's continue to pray for Pastor Wallace as he continues the next phase of his journey. And while we are praying, let's also be liberal in our support to the man of God who God has spared to testify of his goodness. This has warmed my heart, and I know you are feeling blessed. We thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for sharing, Pastor. Thanks to everybody who prayed. Thank you to his family. Just thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And thank you for what you are about to do. And just before we close this segment, let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, hmm. you are such an amazing God, a tremendous God. Words cannot describe your, the magnitude of your might and your power. And Lord, we're not even deserving of your grace and your mercy, but out of sheer love for us, an unbiased love for humanity, you regard us as anybody. Thank you so much for the church and for willing hearts. Thank you for people who have prayed, who have supported our pastor in a very tangible way. Continue to open the windows of heaven for him and pour him out a blessing. Father, he is a man that has been preaching your words. And although everything he has preached has been tested by, God come through for him and bless his life so that he may continue to testify of your goodness. Lord, whomever at this moment is struggling, Although we all struggle in, in some way, shape, or form, I ask that today will be a testament that you are still awesome, you are still amazing, and although you permit these things to come upon us, you are positioning us for your greatest and grandest miracles and moves. Thank you for what you're about to do in pastor's life, in that man or in that boy or woman's life. In your name we pray and believe. Amen. Thank you for watching the Mentorship Connection segment. Join us again next week. Same time, same place. We'll see you after this break. Nothing but heartaches and trouble. I was seeking for fortune and fame. I got nothing but doubts and confusion. And now I have everything. Oh, I have everything I need to make me happy. I have Jesus to show me the way. He has saved me and gave me life eternal. Oh, and now I have everything. I was making big plans for my future. While I was living my lifetime in vain, then I pray for life's only meaning, Lord, but now I have. 
Jesus as our friend and we have a relationship with the God of the Bible, we know that we have everything. He has promised to be with us in all of our situations and what a journey that our pastor has been going through and we know that there are many who have their own journey uh, in different directions and uh, journeys that are uphill and downhill journeys that have twistings and windings on the road that you are journeying on. Journey where we have been all uh, affected by life's challenges in so many ways. But this is the certainty that we have, is what Jesus told his disciples in John 14 and verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come unto you. You can be assured that God's promises are always true. So it doesn't matter where you are, what may be happening to you at any particular time. You know that our God is always ready to be with you. He hears every prayer and he's willing to answer. And he has made a promise and many promises, but one of the promises uh, that he made in Isaiah chapter 65 verse 24 that before you call I will answer and while you are yet speaking I will hear we are certain that we have a God who hears our prayer and so when you are pressed down by life's burden and when you are not down by life's uh, assault when you are made to feel discouraged by the roadblocks and the hindrances and the many difficulties that will come your way, be well assured that Jesus says, I will not leave you comfortless. So he knows our burdens. He knows our pain. He knows our great distresses. And he knows all the things that you go through that we go through, and he's always ready to hear. And prayer is one of the opportunity that we have to connect with God, an opportunity that none of us should neglect. As a matter of fact, I've often said that prayer is where we get the power to go on. 
So imagine if you have no power, just like your cell phone or your car battery or any other thing that may need power is without any form of electricity, whether it's direct current or acquired current, you know that it just can't work. The truth is that we need more power than even our cell phone. We need more power than our car or any other thing that we use that requires power. We need power from God to be able to exist. Just to breathe is enough to tell us that we need God's power in our life. For without God's power, you know that the oxygen in the air would not be right. 21% oxygen, 79% nitrogen. If God's power is not involved in this, it would be wrong. It would not have the right ratio. And if you don't have enough oxygen, you are going to have a hard time breathing. And if you have too much, you're going to be poisoned. So it is God's great power that keeps the universe intact. And that the distance of the sun from the earth or uh, the revolution of the earth around the sun is just right. It is because of the power of God. Every heartbeat, every throbbing of our lungs, and you know it is the power of God. So without his power, we would not make it. So don't take prayer for granted. Make prayer a priority in your life. And I know the power of prayer because I have taken the time out to talk to God so often and so many times. And when I am distressed, when I am perplexed, when I am sick, when I am disturbed, when I feel like giving up, I can tell you I have found the source of power and that is through prayer, talking and connecting to God. And I want to encourage you to do that. Here's something from the Word of God in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. John is assuring us that we have confidence that God will answer. And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He hear us, whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. So I say to you, my brothers, my sisters, my friends watching, uh, let prayer be that which you not only do when you are sick, not only pray when you are in trouble, not only pray when you have no other way to turn or no other option to choose. Make prayer a priority every day as you get up from your bed and as you go about your daily activities, as you retire at night to rest, let that be something that you do. Connect yourself to God. Plug into the source of divine power and you know that God is going to hear your prayer. He has promised to hear and we have the confidence that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Now, the truth is that we just can't tell God how to answer our prayer or when to do the things that we would desire. But we can tell him everything that is on our heart. We can just tell him everything that concerns us. And we know that if we call out of the sincerity of our heart, we will have to wait patiently on him. Wait patiently on him because his timing is best. He may not answer the prayer in the way that we want or come through at the time that we expect, but he's an on-time God. He faithfully will carry out his promises and will answer in his own way, in his own time. And so we have some requests that we are presenting to the Lord this afternoon, we want to pray for those persons who are not well. They're battling with challenges, sicknesses of all sort, uh, cancer or, or some other kind of disease or sickness. We know that God hears prayer. There are some persons who are concerned about their relationship. Their marriage or relationship is not going right. Some have been going through a rough time. Some have been broken. 
But God is able to hear and to answer and to work things out. There are some who are concerned about their children, who they want to serve the Lord. We want to lift them up in prayer. And there are some who are struggling for victory over sin, some addiction. God is able. And so as we present these requests to the Lord, I ask you to join me in prayer as we talk to our Heavenly Father. Our Heavenly Father, the great King of the universe, you are still the faithful God. You're always faithful to your promises. You're a God of love and mercy. And even though we don't deserve so many of your mercies and your blessings, you are constantly showering them upon us. So we praise you, O great Jehovah. Thank you for being so good to us. Thank you for your leading in our lives. We lift up before you, O God, your people who are sick, many different ailments that they have been going through and experiencing, many, many medical procedures. Some have been faced with the great challenges of cancer and so many types of cancer that we face today. Lord, we believe that there is no problem that you can solve. Every sickness you can heal. And so we call upon you, O great physician, that you will hear the prayer of your children this afternoon. We pray for healing of those who are struggling with all of these sicknesses and diseases. We pray for your mighty hand of healing upon them through the power of your spirit. That you will provide healing and restoration. We pray that those medical individuals who attend to them will have the wisdom, the knowledge, and all that it takes to handle their challenges. Lord, we know that you have done it in the past, and we know that you can do it again. So in the name of Jesus, we pray for healing for all those who call upon you for your help. We pray for those, Lord, who have family issues their homes are broken. Their relationship is broken. Oh God, we pray that you'll heal these broken hearts, these damaged relationships, that you'll give wisdom and understanding to them. We pray, Lord, that you'll heal their hurts. May they have a heart of forgiveness. May the broken relationships according to your mighty power be restored, Lord, and that your name can be glorified through the restoration that you will cause to happen. We pray for those children, Lord, who have wandered away or those children who have not yet made a commitment to you. Their parents are calling out to you, Lord, to deliver them. Oh God, deliver them through your mighty power from the hand of the enemy. Rescue them, Lord, from the chains of sin. Help them, Father, to know that there is a better way, a better life. In Jesus, we pray, Father, for those who are struggling with some addiction, whatever it is. They want to overcome worldliness and, and sinful habits, Lord, but they're struggling day by day. We ask, Lord, you who have the power to deliver every sinner, that you'll break them loose through the mighty power of your Holy Spirit and take them to a different level of their experience in life. May they find their their life at the foot of the cross, surrendered and restored to a life of wholeness, a life of true obedience. Convert them, transform them, and save them by your grace. Lord, we present all of your workers in various fields of the world who are challenged with so many different things. Oh, Lord, we pray that you will protect your workers. We pray that you will give them strength and courage. The enemy continually seeks to destroy them or to damage them. But, Lord, in your hands, we place our pastors and all our workers. Strengthen their faith. Keep them trusting in you, Lord. Give them victory, we pray. And, oh, Lord, as we present these to you, we know that you have heard. And we claim answers to a prayer. According to your will and in your own time, through the precious name of Jesus, amen. Amen.
Friends, God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us here uh, on the online worship, West Jamaica Conference. Thank you for your company. We hope that you would have been inspired and be uh, encouraged to walk with the Lord. And whatever the challenges that you are facing, know that in the coming week, you're not alone. Jesus says that he will be with you. Thanks for joining us again, and we wish you a wonderful week. God bless you. Until next time, here on Online Worship, West Jamaica Conference. Lord be with you.